Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Clemens, the Ecology and Natural Resources Educator at University of Florida IFAS Sarasota County Extension. We are here with the LIFE program, Learning in Florida's Environment, and today's topic is going to be Florida's native snakes. So let's talk about snakes for a minute. Snakes are a vertebrate. So do you remember what that word means, vertebrate? It means that snakes have a backbone. And a lot of people think that snakes don't have a backbone because they can move around so easily, but they really do. And so we're gonna take a look at this cool x-ray I have of a rattlesnake. And the x-ray shows all of those individual vertebrae in the snake's backbone. So snakes are vertebrates. Can you tell me what the other, or what all five classes of vertebrates are? Snakes are what type of animal? Begins with an R. That's right, they are reptiles. And the other classes of vertebrates are mammals, birds, fish, amphibians, and then our reptiles like our snakes. And here in Florida, of course, we have alligators and turtles are some of our other reptiles. So what makes a reptile a reptile? Do you remember? Well, one thing is, is that they have scales or alligators and turtles have a modified type of scale called a scoot. So we'll show you scoots in our other alligator video. And snakes or other reptiles are also ectothermic. Ectothermic means cold-blooded. That's the fancy science word for cold-blooded. And that means their body temperature doesn't stay the same like ours does. Their body temperature is determined by the environment. So if it's a cold day, those snakes have to go somewhere in the sun to warm up before they start moving or get ready to eat and go about their day. Also, most reptiles lay eggs and most of their eggs are rubbery, although sometimes they have a hard shell like a bird shell. Snakes are unique though that some snakes do lay eggs, but some snakes also have live birth, meaning they give birth to little baby snakes. So that's a little bit about vertebrates and reptiles and snakes in general. So we're almost ready to meet our special guest, Wilma Holly, and she has brought an even more special guest with her today. She has brought her red rat snake, Maisie. So Florida has about 40 or more native snakes that belong here in Florida. And Maisie, the red rat snake, is a native snake. Also, one of the snakes that's most commonly found in your backyard is the black racer. So we'll show you a picture of the black racer. These are non-venomous snakes and black racers are great for the environment and great to have in your yard. We have six venomous snakes in Florida, but only four of those are found here in Sarasota County. So most snakes that you see will be non-venomous, but you should still be careful with them when you come upon them. So I am going to introduce you to Wilma Holly, and she is going to spend some more time telling you about snakes. Hello, I'm Wilma Holly. I'm the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program Specialist. I work at Sarasota County Extension Office and I do a lot of different things. So the Florida Friendly Landscaping Program has nine principles in um, protecting wildlife and, and providing for wildlife in your landscape is one of them. And snakes are part of that program because you want to provide habitat for different kinds of wildlife in your yard. Snakes are a very important part of our environment. They're pretty amazing actually. They're legless reptiles and they are ectotherms. They have to regulate their, their body temperature by their surroundings. So which means on a really, really cold day in the winter, they would have to be out on a rock or in a bare patch of soil to warm up on, on a hot day. They might be completely hidden. You might not see them. And other times you might just see them crawling around in your landscape because they're perfectly comfortable the way they are. So um, they're, they're really cool, but there's some things you need to learn about snakes. Make sure you don't try to pick them up because you don't know um, what they're going to do, if they're, if they're venomous or not. And um, there's, there's a difference between venomous and poisonous. Some people confuse that. 
Snakes aren't poisonous, they're venomous, which means they would have to bite you to inject that poison into your system. If they're poisonous, it would be something that you would eat that's poisonous, like a poisonous berry or something like that. So they are venomous, or there are a few venomous ones, only four in our area, so we're really lucky about that. There's two kinds of rattlesnakes, the diamondback rattlesnake, which can get really, really large, and then the pygmy rattlesnake, which only gets to be about 18 inches. And then also there's the, the cotton mouth, which gets its name because when it opens its mouth, it's white inside. And that's um, one that you would find near water, not always in water, but it does like to be in water. And then also the coral snake. I have a plastic coral snake here to show you what they look like. Um, they have a black head. There's some mimics that look like coral snakes. But the best way to remember is, because most people know that if they see a yellow light, that it's gonna turn red and they have to stop. So you see the yellow and the red are together on this venomous snake. There's other snakes that the, the black would be between the red and the yellow, and then that one's okay. Snakes eat a lot of different things, and that's why they're so valuable to our environment. They eat, well, unfortunately, sometimes they eat birds and bird eggs. I don't like that about them, but they have to survive, and they're part of the food web and the food chain, and everything keeps everything else in balance. So the snakes are helping. They eat a lot of insects. They eat rats and mice, and by them doing that, they're keeping those away from us and keeping our environment safer for us. So we want to let snakes live out in our, our yards. I do have my snake here with me today, and I'm going to bring him out and show you Maisie. His name is Maisie. He was actually, um, it sounds like a girl's name because when um, I bought him at the pet store, they told me he was a female. But as he grew, I found out that he wasn't really a female. And it will take me just a minute to get him out because he's not... Um, love, he doesn't love to be handled, but he doesn't really mind it a lot. Um, unless I, I took him to a school once and he did try to get back in his cage because I was letting uh, some of the children handle him. But he just shed his skin last night and sometimes they shed a whole skin. I'm going to try to show you that because it's, it's pretty amazing how big he is. He is actually 60 inches long now which is just a couple inches shorter than me, which is pretty amazing. When I first got him, he was less than 12 inches long. This was a shed a few months after I got him. So you can see how tiny he was at that point. Um, they even, when they shed, they shed, um, they, they have skin over their eyelids. So when you look really closely at the shed, you can see those, those um, I, I, the skin over the eyes. They, don't they can't close their eyes, so that's, that's the skin over the eyes. They have really big scales on their belly, smaller scales on the, the rest of them. So the top of them is smaller scales. You don't notice them as much when, when they're on them and it's all part of his color, but when they shed their skin and it's clear, you notice a lot about them. Oh, he sheds every four to six weeks. All these skins that I have, it just totally amazed me. That was one of the things that I learned. I thought maybe they shed once or twice a year. And um, he sheds, when he was younger, about every four weeks, so once a month. And then as he got older, now he probably sheds more like every six weeks, but he's still shedding a lot. And um, I don't know when he gets fully grown if he will still shed a little bit. I mean, he's getting close to his full um, growth. They can get up to 72 inches. He's supposed to live about 22 years, and he's about five years old now. Um, when I got him, I think he was a month or two old. They didn't really tell me at the pet store, but um, he... He's got quite a few years left, and he always likes to try to hide. So he'll go, he tries to get down inside my shirt or crawl up my arm sleeve, or he likes, he'll go towards a dark object because he thinks he can get away. He's very, very strong. He can hold on um, quite a bit. And he, um, you don't really think of snakes as having a personality or anything, but they kind of do. He kind of knows me. He knows. My, the sight of me, he knows I give him his food. They smell with their tongue. You've seen him sticking his tongue out quite a few, a little bit, and that's how they smell. The thing about um, snakes, 
you wouldn't think that a head like that could get a mouse inside of it, but they can unhinge their jaws and, and really eat something that's three or four times as big as their head. So that, that's just totally amazing. And then you can see the mouse go down his body as he swallows it and it goes all the way down. The reason I got a snake is because I was all of a sudden asked to teach about snakes and I didn't know anything about snakes. And I th think it's easier to teach about something that you have some experience with. I'm just glad they didn't ask me to teach about bears and alligators because those would be hard to have as a pet. So anyways, um, really fun, but you still have to learn to handle them properly. Make sure you don't ever let a pet snake out into the environment, especially if it's one of the pythons or something like that because they can really create havoc with, with the environment. They, um, and plus, if I let him out, he would probably be killed immediately because he's used to me feeding him. He wouldn't know how to get his food, where to go, and, and he would be he would probably be out in the open and get eaten by a bird immediately, something like that. So never let a pet out into the environment just for the safety of the environment and for the safety of the snake. So just, just remember those things. Don't, um, don't let any snakes go if they're a pet. Don't try to handle them when you're out in the environment. Don't um, mistreat them. Don't try to corner them. Um, if somebody is bitten about it by a snake, whether you know if it's venomous or not, call 911. They can determine a lot of times by the bite mark if it's, if it's venomous or not. You want to get help immediately. All right, so now I'm going to show you a really cool activity you can do with things that you already probably have at home or that you would have at school. We are going to make a snake kite. So this is what you need right here. You can gather up a small piece of tape, some yarn or string, whatever you have at home, markers or a pencil, and then you're gonna want something to color with. So either colored markers, colored pencils, or crayons would be great. A piece of paper and some scissors. So that's everything we need. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our pencil or you could even use a marker to make a bigger line if you want. And we're gonna draw a snake. We're gonna start right in the circle of our paper and we're gonna start drawing a spiral. So you just keep making a spiral all the way out. And then I'm gonna make the head of my snake right about there and connect the line back to this line here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna color this and you can color it in any color or pattern that you want. If you want, you can even do a little bit of research about our native snakes and color your snake kite like one of our actual native snakes or you can just do whatever you want. Here's one that we've already done, this is a native snake called a ring snake, a ring neck snake. And as you can see, that's because it has a ring around its neck. So when we made this, we colored this side black with the ring, but look, you can color the other side a different color if you want. You can even draw a tongue before you cut it out and you can put some googly eyes on if you want. When you go to cut it out after you've colored it, you wanna start by cutting and cut all the way around. So you cut right on the lines you've drawn all the way into the center and that will give you your snake. Once you've colored it and you've cut it out, then you take your piece of string and you can just use a little piece of tape to tape the string to the head of our snake and now you have this fun little swirly snake kite that you can run around outside with, or you can even hang it from the ceiling in your bedroom or somewhere else in your house. All right, thanks for joining us today for our Learning in Florida's Environment Life Program about snakes. And I look forward to seeing you for the next episode. Bye.